Well, when you think of taking somebody to court, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I mean, why does one person file a lawsuit against another person, facing that person in the courtroom in front of the judge? Well, of course, I would argue that the reason a person does that is that person wants justice. He wants his rights to be protected, to be enforced. I mean, that is our right as an American citizen, right? That justice be upheld and that there is some sort of punishment to counter whatever the infringement of my rights might have been. You know, like you hit my car in a traffic accident and now you have to pay for it. Or you slandered my good name, and now you have to pay to make that up. Or maybe you made a bad business decision on my behalf, and you ruined my business. You pay. Forgiveness? Hmm. Our gospel reading this morning and the parable that Jesus tells to us flies right in the face, doesn't it, of this most basic American jurisprudence rights, doesn't it? We want justice. Peter comes to the Lord and asks him, Lord, how often will I forgive my brother when he sins against me? As many as seven times. Now how ironic, this is the same Peter who will deny our Lord not one time but three times and then go hide in the shadows when Jesus is being tortured. Now Peter thinks he's being generous here. As you remember in the description of the text at the time the Jewish tradition was you could forgive somebody three times but at that point you were no longer under any obligation. Peter thinks he's being generous. Lord, I'll forgive him seven times. That's more than double. Again, hmm. I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. You mean I have to keep forgiving that same person over and over again, even if he hits my car some 77 times? Lord, that's a lot of forgiving. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, Jesus Christ came into this world to change the entire system of forgiveness. And in this parable, Jesus tells us all about what this forgiveness is like, what it should look like. See, there's this master, and he comes to settle the accounts with his servants. And he calls in one servant who owes him 10,000 talents. Do you know how much that is? A talent is about 20 years worth of wages. So I did a little bit of math. Based on my salary and benefits, that would be like owing 16 billion, not million, billion dollars. Did a little more math. I did some basic math, and it would take me 2,500 lifetimes, not years, 2,500 lifetimes to repay that debt. I mean, that's more than Donald Trump is worth. <laughs> the point is this. This servant is caught in an absolutely unpayable debt. He can never repay it. And so in a last-ditch effort, the servant falls on his knees and, and he begs this king, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Now, a couple of things come to mind for me. First of all, I thought, what fool would have extended this man $16 billion worth of credit? And secondly, how did this servant ever think he would ever repay $16 billion. I mean, I can just imagine the king's reaction, probably the smile on his face when, when he said to him, have patience with me and I'll pay you back. But in any event, as the text says, out of pity, the master released him and forgave him the debt with no strings attached. That's too bad that this 
servant doesn't do the same thing for another servant who owed him a debt as well. But the difference is, in this situation, the other servant owes him a hundred denarii. Now, a denarii is a day's wages, so he owed him roughly a hundred days' wages, or about a third of his annual salary. See, that's a lot of money as well, but it's not an impossible debt like the first servant's was. I mean, of course, you heard the text. You know what happened. The king hears that this servant, who he forgave $16 billion worth of debt, wouldn't do the same thing for a much smaller amount for another servant. And so the king drags him back in. He reinstates his debt, and he throws him into debtor's prison. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Why? Because, my friends, let me tell you something. In Christian forgiveness, you will find out that forgiveness is all about setting a prisoner free. We end up finding out that we were that prisoner. You see, my friends, when we forgive others, we forgive ourselves. Without question, We've all been hurt by somebody. I know I have. But in withholding forgiveness, what we end up doing is holding on to the pain from that original wrong, that original hurt. And it's like letting that hurt imprison us, just as the king imprisoned the debtor. When we refuse to forgive freely and completely, that hurt perpetrated against us ends up being the very prison walls that holds us in, holds us in with that pain where it festers. Unforgiveness robs us of peace and joy. And in robbing us of this peace and joy, it stands in the way of allowing us to experience true godly peace and joy from knowing God. It, it literally blocks it. See, my friends, as I said, Jesus came to change the entire system of forgiveness, to change our understanding of forgiveness. Look at the example he set. He paid a debt Way, it cost way more than $16 billion, and he himself didn't even owe it. He paid our debt, the debt of our sin. Why did Jesus do this? So that we could be forgiven, and so that we could forgive. Again, forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. You see, my friends, forgiveness is a path to a power of Christ, and that power is known as grace. Forgiveness is a gift that God makes available to us through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. We forgive others, not because they deserve the forgiveness, but because you and I, we deserve peace. Let me say that again. We forgive others, not because they deserve that forgiveness, but because we deserve peace. Since we have been forgiven of each and every sin, since our sin is as far from us as the east is from the west. That means that we stand before God, holy, good, and righteous. Not because of anything we've done, but because of grace, because of the fact that we are covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so we are enabled to forgive others as God first forgave us. It's just as I said. Forgiveness is setting a prisoner free, even though he doesn't deserve it. And then finding out in the process, we were that prisoner. We set ourselves free. 
and that means we can let go of the pain. And we can experience God's love and joy and peace. We can be set free by the power of forgiveness. In my own life, I have watched somebody absolutely destroyed, turned into a resentful and angry and bitter person, all because of holding on to the pain of a wrong that was committed against them and denying that forgiveness. I watched that person become imprisoned by holding on to that pain instead of giving it away in the form of forgiveness. It's tragic. Friends, how great of a gift we have in the forgiveness we have through Jesus Christ. I want you to recognize that this forgiveness has done something to us. It's changed us. See, the more we hear and understand of the magnitude of the debt that we owe, this unpayable debt, and then the, for, the complete forgiveness, so freely given to us by Jesus Christ, the more we are set free to let whatever pain we have go and then forgive others. I want you to understand something. On our own, we can't forgive. Our ability to forgive depends completely on Christ's forgiveness, earned for us on the cross. And for that matter, our greatness is found only in Christ's greatness. Our glory is found only through his glory. That is in his compassion and his love that covers all of our sin, and in this joy that forgiveness brings to us. Who's the greatest in the kingdom of God? Of course, it is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the greatest in the kingdom. For his forgiveness is complete, it's total, it's undeserved, and it's entirely for you. It's freeing, and today, you're given this freedom to share this greatness of God. Let go of whatever it is that binds you and find that peace and joy that Christ earned for you in bringing you this complete forgiveness of your sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father God, sometimes it is very difficult to forgive. The hurt, it runs so deep. The pain, it goes so far back. But we look to your son Jesus, who on the cross, who was suffering on our behalf, cried out to his father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, when we cannot forgive, help us to appeal to you to forgive them first and then empower us to let go of the pain so that we too can forgive from your example. How great is your mercy, Lord. How great and awe-inspiring is your love. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. Thank you, Lord, for freeing us from what held us away from you, our sin. We pray that we likewise do for others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the true faith which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.